Zimbabwe's drive to be an upper middle income economy by 2030 is a telltale of stories of painful sacrifice, stories of resilience, stories of hard work, stories of commitment. And one such story which needs to be told to the people of Zimbabwe is the awakening of the Zimbabwean giant. Lest we talk about the issues to do with the vocational training centers as hubs of economic development and transformation for communities, especially in rural communities. And today we are here in Manikaland at Magamba Vocational Training Center, which is pioneering and leading the drive to ensure that the aspirations of transitional stabilization program are realized within this community. Zimbabwe needs resilient people. Zimbabwe is not a people, uh, a nation of people who just want things on the table. You have to work for it. We are a nation that is born out of blood, that is born out of courage, that is born out of resilience, and it needs a brave citizenry. A government is there to make policies which are favorable to its own uh, society, its own nation. But government alone, uh, it's not adequate to turn around what they implement, okay? So um, it is the, the people, it is the qualified people, it is the trained uh, people who then makes it to happen for a nation to take in its own economy. It's important to have a question. I want to train for you, to, for, for enterprise. You know, it's a business. You go into the community, then you create your own job, which means others will benefit from you. So. My, my, my vocational training center at Bazia Sukur because I know this out you can away and we impact you who knows in Zaku. My name is Lakmo Jiki. Uh, I'm doing a, a diploma in tobacco production with the Bindra University of Science and Technology in collaboration with Magamba Training Center. This uh, facility is very good. It's very good in the sense that for the students uh, you, you get well equipped in the sense that it's hands on, right? It's hands on, uh, but at the end of the day, like us, the diploma guys, uh, you are hit up again with the theory side. <laughs> so I would find good to, to take somebody from this institution, right? That person is a really a hands on person. Uh, the process is common. So for the community, you find good. It benefits a lot because you'll be having somebody who is resourceful in terms of knowledge, who can impart that knowledge to the other, uh, to the other farmers. Right. Uh, for the nation, again, it is it's very important if we have got quite a number of institutions which provide the facility. If somebody comes out from this point, I should end up on the ground there and perform really zanga chitapanaba, then it benefits the nation. So, in other words, you are also saying the vocational training centers, that's where the, the, the future employers that's where are, the future are lies. created. Yeah. yeah, that's where the future lies. Because really, if you don't have this, then we continue to have challenges. Because our challenge is in terms of production. We don't have people who are very creative, right? We, 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 we avoid people who sought employment, right? Like myself, you see, can I say, when I graduated, I have to look for employment, specifically employment. Why? I want to be an employer myself, right? Why do I, do I say that? I came here to get uh, fully equipped in terms of knowledge, so that when I went back uh, to my place, I have the facilities to, 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 to spruce up my area, to, 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 to institute my, my, my my, my, my cropping programs, then, and in particular, having this crop. Why this crop? Because it's a foreign currency. Earner. And as Zimbabwe, that's what we are looking for. I know, of course, there are campaigns that we, we should do away with the tobacco, things like that. But for us, we really have to rely on it for the time being, because we need forex, you see, given the situation we have. And if you go downstream, you find that we create more employment. In the sense, you get, for example, your leaf tax, right? The farm workers, right? Go to the tobacco floors, auction floors. You put those mothers cooking for, 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 for the farmers who are coming with their tobacco, right? Cigarette manufacturing. You put these guys 
my flows were busy loading and offloading tobacco. So there is a huge sort of like employment in this in this kind of industry. But what is needed is really putting much effort in terms of training people, in terms of equipping them with knowledge, so that they really really boost the, the, the production, in particular in our commercial farms and in the small scale, even up to the communal. Because right now, if you check the, the, the inflation sort of rates, you are, you are aged when you, when you have your, your, your tobacco. I'm, I'm pretty well. <laughs> Beautiful. You see? So I think that's the way to go. How critical is that, the importance of this value chain impartation of knowledge? Yes, we have to give these uh, youth skills. We say skills are life. Once we have given them the ability to go and themselves go produce a quality crop. As individuals, we enhance their, 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 their lives. They manage their own families. And a few of them also manage to get jobs, either on farms, in industry, and so on, that are tobacco related. And uh, uh, it value to our whole uh, economy in the country. As everybody is aware, tobacco is one of the major forex earners for Zimbabwe. So we take these projects very seriously. Skills training are fundamental for any nation to be uh, productive, for any nation to develop, and for any uh, community, you know, to sustain within its own productivity. So we are looking here that uh, we uh, really need the industry uh, which is uh, uh, relevant in terms of productivity. Uh, you, you know, we need manufacturers, you know, industry which open towards the in line of manufacturing. Now at the moment we are getting a, a lot of our product from South Africa. That's not good for the nation. And also we're getting a lot of, uh, you know, uh, products from Mozambique instead of ourselves uh, exporting more to them and exporting more to South Africa even in Zambia, like I said the whole SADAC including uh, Botswana, we are getting a lot of uh, manufacturing products in their country to feed our own uh, people in our own country, that's not good because now we, we are buying uh, sending off the money, we are giving them the money which is uh, uh, USD uh, to other countries. So we are emptying our own resources be because uh, we don't have a, an industry which is a, a homegrown, uh, designed for pro, pro, uh, productivity uh, to feed our own people, like Mill Mill. Okay, for an example, you get a meal from, from South Africa, you get flour from South Africa, you get cooking oil from South Africa, uh, we, we get margarine from South Africa, we get yeast, you know, which is used uh, for baking from South Africa, the baking powder from South Africa. It's like we, are, we, are, we have now become a, a country which does not uh, have its own industry. And a lot of the uh, industry shells, they're just empty shells without uh, anything which is happening inside. So we are encouraging uh, our own people, uh, the SMEs, uh, to be more productive in lines of manufacturing. This is Economics 101, your program that captures issues to do with the development within the country. We are casting a spotlight on different projects that are happening around the country with a particular focus on vocational training centers which have been identified as critical hubs for entrepreneurship in provinces. And we are here at Magamba Vocational Training Center. Let's just hear the perspectives from the Magamba Vocational Training Center Principal Mr. Isaiah Sabri on the role of vocational training centers within the context of the transitional stabilization program and the aspirations of the Second Republic. Mr. Sabri, 
vocational training centers, do they have a role to play in this economic transformation under the transition, transition of stabilization program? Indeed, yes. Uh, the transitional program the country is under now in the new dispensation is about doing, is about production. We need to move into the economic development mantra and we can't move without manpower development. And this is the gist of vocational training institutions in the country. They are the hub of uh, training, they are the hub of business uh, development, they are the hub of vocational skills development. And indeed, we, we're seeing, like Magamba Training Center, for example, Chaminuka Vocational Training Institution in Mount Darwin, uh, Kaguvi Training Center in uh, Midlands, Mushagashi, in Masingo, and many others. They are so positioned provincially like that so that we have this impetus distributed across the country. And indeed, that's why these institutions were put in place. And when we see, we look at this field, it's a testament, testament to the issues of productivity, which His Excellency is always uh, highlighting in various forums. True. The beauty about vocational training institutions is that they are guided by the national vision. The leadership of the country have got an objective for the national development, and it is through these institutions which are at grassroots level. And when you look at this field, for instance, it's just but one of the testimonies that when the national leadership is talking about the partnerships with private sector, the partnerships with the development partners, for instance, it is that aspect and perception that leaders, real leaders in governance must really uphold. You can't do a thing on your own. You can't be uh, self-sustaining on your own. You need an assistant. And this is why the institutions, like, like Magamba, for instance, is getting into partnerships with a number of, uh, um, of development partners, a number of organizations, and specifically the British American Tobacco, Tobacco Empowerment Trust, which came in to support the indigenization mantra, which we are now taking further to Vision 2030, in terms of um, the you know the economic uh, uh, development agenda, uh, the middle income uh, um, uh, aspects, and so on. And when you look at this, this is not a commercial uh, project, but this is just a demonstration being done by students through training. The philosophy that we take as an institution is training for enterprise development. We train entrepreneurs. We train people who should create employment for others. And the Tobacco Empowerment Trust has come in to support the government of Zimbabwe through the Ministry of Youth, Sport, Art and Culture, through the two institutions, Magamba Training Center and Chaminuka Vocational Training Center, in that when we take on board the farmers, the youngsters, into agriculture activities, they must be able to do quality production. And tobacco production is one of the issues that we have started with. The reason being one, it is a forex earner. It is an income generating crop. It is a crop that is easier to manage with the proper agrotechnology, with the proper agronomic practices that we are enjoying with the partnerships of TIMB, uh, Tobacco Research Board, um, and, uh, and the BAT Trust, they also give us support. We have got uh, uh, their, their, their employees here that are working with the college as, as a testimony of the partnership. And indeed, this crop is not just going to wilt here. You will see how we also process it. We don't just process it there, we take it to the floors. We don't just take it to the floors, we generate income for the college, for self-sustenance. And this is why we are saying we are training for enterprise development. We train by doing, we train by productivity. Students that come into the training for enterprise program, they are practical people. They are people who are taught 80% practical theory is just 20 percent you you don't you don't get into the field and theorize you get into the field and work
And we are creating employers. And we are creating employers. True, we are creating employers. The farmer that we have trained, that have graduated today, they are not going to work by themselves. They are going to engage one, two, three people. That farmer on his own is the first employer. The second employer is the wife. The third employer is the son-in-law, the, the, the daughter-in-law. And one or two outsiders, they come in. So that they will then uh, get something at the end of the day. And if we have got three, four, five farmers who are engaging additional three people, we already have created employment for six people within two families. And indeed, human capital development is the key, is the pinnacle to, to economic emancipation. And the vocational training institutions are there to ensure that we, we, we work with the psychomotor um, uh, and, uh, and uh, the cognitive domain and the affective domains in that we do not recognize as a first priority the academic prowess, but we recognize the ability to produce, the ability to appreciate that crops are live things. Crops are biological things, and indeed you need to continue looking at, after them so that they remain alive. I, I, I think if we have government support, private support to these institutions, the country will never be the same again. And do you have some kind of programs that you do follow up on monitoring on the, of these graduates when they are now into their own fields, alumni and some some that you can call that these are giants that came from these institutions? I tell you, we have got quite a number of students that are out there doing a lot, not only in agriculture, but in in quite a number of programs that we train. We train hospitality and tourism. We, we, we train motor mechanics. We train welders. We train bricklayers. We train carpenters um, over and above the agriculturists. When you look at some institutions uh, and industries that I may not mention by name here, but I'll tell you um, that we have got quite a number. The praxis approach that we do needs following up on our students. The graduating class that have graduated at Magamba today of practicing farmers, it was a modularized program. We have been cognizant that these people have got some other activities that they need to do back at home. And so we can't take them on a 100% institutionalized training. So they come here, we go through them a certain program. Um, module one, module two, for instance, they do seedbed management, etc., etc. They go and do practice. In essence, we need to follow them up and get to where they are and see whether they are doing the practical things that we have trained them. We also do the same with other um, uh, programs that we do train. We, we have got what we call on-the-job training. At college, they train through production. And we let them go out and also practice. We also follow them up there to see whether they are doing exactly what the trainers have taught them. And by so doing, you're also embracing the devolution agenda, which is to do with the issues to do with empowerment of communities and development of communities. I like the devolution aspect. We have got various uh, um, endowments in this country. Uh, and these endowments are quarantined in terms of provinces and regions. Yes, the human capital development. Aspect. Yes, yes, the human capital development at a provincial level. It must be attuned to the endowments in that particular um, uh, province. You can't teach about value addition to tomatoes when that area doesn't grow tomatoes. You talk about mining. Value addition to minerals, where there is mining taking place. You look at, 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 at here, when you look at those mountains there, they, uh, they, are, they, they are artisanal miners that are there. And it is the, the institutional's mandate to ensure that whatever is happening there, it is being done properly. And we should be, therefore be able to craft a syllabus that would answer issues and concerns and needs of the people that are around as per resources that are within the province. Therefore, it is important to note 
that these institutions dotted as they are nationally, they are for a purpose, to support the devolution process. It is the leadership in each and every province now to make sure that they make use of these institutions. They are not just research institutions. They are not just vocational institutions um, per se, but they are there specifically to respond to needs and demands of the areas that they are situated. And obviously there's need to harness this demographic dividend that the youth being, being the, the majority. Oh, they yes. Need to tap into that, hence the, the VT is coming in. Handy. Exactly. You see, when you look at the the youth demographics, it is quite challenging and more and more heart-burning, especially when you hear these machet welding uh, youngsters. I mean, that's horrific, that's inhumane. Zimbabwe is a peace-loving country. We cannot allow a situation where youngsters just go willy-nilly, killing people as they want, like animals. We can't do that. We, we need to harness um, the, the needs for the youngsters. We, it's an indication that there is something that needs to be done. And as Ministry of Youth, Sports, Art and Recreation, and as vocational training institutions, we are therefore challenged by these things that are coming out to ensure that indeed these youngsters, they are interested in mining. What are the ethics to be followed? What are the expertise that they need? What are the, 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 you know, the, the ethical considerations that they must have? The Ubuntu aspect. You know, when you, you are hungry, you, you don't need to be angry. You, when you are hungry, you need to be innovative. You know, people of the olden age, they would survive on, on, on bugs, on tree bugs. Uh, there are certain bugs that you can chew and spend the whole day feeling you know, satisfied. What you only need probably would be some, um, some water here and there. Even if where you go without water, there are leaves that are in the bush there that you can chew and get some water and salvage some water and you can proceed with whatever you want to do. And these are the innovations that we are calling upon that the, in, the institutions like vocational training institutions must now get into. We must get into pursuing the innovative aspect. Entrepreneurship can only be promoted through innovation. You can't be an entrepreneur if you do not have an enterprising mentality. And this is what we are calling upon the youngsters out there, that it is not about you know, um, taking over from somebody what they have won or what they have actually dug and, and got. You also want to copy how they are doing it, not to get over what others have suffered for. And this is the problem that we are having. And truly speaking, the youngsters of today, they lack counseling. Obviously, Mr. Sabi, one thing that is always on the minds of people out there is the, some they try to belittle the, the role of vocational training centers. In your view, uh, can anything good come out of these vocational training centers? I, I tell you, um, those people need to clean their minds. Vocational institutions are tertiary-like institutions. They are the same um, Magamba Training Center, for example. It's an accredited institution with a university. We fall into the national qualification framework of the country. That's why we are offering diplomas here. That's why we are offering certificates, the accredited certificates. That's why our candidates, our graduates, are being taken by industry and commerce. Our certificate, our expertise that we are churning out here, is getting out there into the, in, beyond the borders of Zimbabwe. Vocational institutions are the institutions that bridge the gap between the high flyers and those that would want to be productive. The institutions of vocational training are institutions that put emphasis on practice. Whereas the polytechnics and uh, universities, they put more emphasis on theory and research. Research that should then inform vocational institutions for appropriate technology. And if anything is needed, the government needs to seek collaboration between these institutions, the vocational, the polytechnic, and the university. At each and every stage, we have got a difference in terms of approach, we have got a difference in terms of acquisition of knowledge. 
at vocational institution, we are looking at the artisans people. We are looking at the production line personnel. We are looking at people who are in the forefront of productivity. People who can do anything without anything. They are there. What is only needed is the enthusiasm, the ability to work, the ability to be resilient. So we, we are a nation that is born out of blood, that is born out of courage, that is born out of resilience, and it needs a brave citizenry. That is Mr. Isaiah Sabwe, the principal of Magamba Vocational Training Center, speaking passionately about issues to do with skills training and empowerment, training for enterprise for the youth and other people within the communities. That is your program, Economics 101, your program that captures issues to do with development within the country. Mm -hmm.